chapter seventeen of recollections and letters of general robert e lee by robert e lee jr this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter seventeen the reconstruction period the general believes in the enforcement of law and order his moral influence in the college playful humor shown in his letters his opinion of negro labor mr davis's trial letter to mrs fitzhugh lee intercourse with faculty virginia was at this time still under military rule the reconstruction days were not over my father had himself accepted the political situation after the war and had advised every one who had sought his advice to do the same the following incident and letters will show his acquiescence in the law of the land and ready submission to the authorities in a street disturbance that spring a student had been shot by a negro and it was reported that in case of the young man's death the murderer would be summarily dealt with by his college mates captain wagner the military commander wrote to general lee informing him of these reports he received the following reply washington college lexington virginia may four eighteen sixty eight captain wagner commissioner district lexington virginia sir upon investigation of the reports which you communicated to me yesterday afternoon i can find no foundation for the apprehension that the students of washington college contemplate any attack upon the man confined in jail for shooting mr blank friday night on the contrary i have been assured by members of the faculty and individual students that they have heard no suggestion of the kind and they believe that no such intention has been entertained or now exists i think therefore the reports made to you were groundless very respectfully your obedient servant r e lee however in order to take all precautions and provide against any disturbance he wrote as follows to the president of the young men's christian association whom he knew and trusted and who was a man of much influence with his fellow-students mr g b strickler president young men's christian association washington college i have just been informed by captain wagner military commissioner of this district that from information received by him he had reason to apprehend that should the wound received by mr blank friday night prove fatal the students of washington college contemplate taking from the jail the man who shot him and inflicting upon him summary punishment i cannot believe that any such act is intended or would be allowed by the students of washington college though it is possible that such an intention may have been spoken of amongst them i think it only necessary to call the attention of the students to the report to prevent such an occurrence i feel convinced that none would countenance such outrage against law and order but that all will cheerfully submit to the administration of justice by the legal authorities as the readiest way of communicating with the students at this hour on sunday i have concluded to address you this letter that through the members of the young men's christian association the students generally may be informed of the apprehension entertained by the military authorities and i earnestly invoke the students to abstain from any violation of law and to unite in preserving quiet and order on this and every occasion very respectfully your obedient servant r e lee the young man recovered there was no disturbance of any kind nor was it believed that there would have been after this appeal from the president even if the wound had proved fatal nor was it a moral influence alone that he exerted in the college he was equally careful of the intellectual interests he watched the progress of every class attended all the examinations and strove constantly to stimulate both professors and students to the highest attainments the whole college in a word felt his influence as an ever-present motive and his character was quietly but irresistibly impressed upon it not only in the general working of all its departments but in all the details of each of this influence general lee modest as he was was perfectly aware and like a prudent ruler he husbanded it with wise economy he preferred to confine his direct interposition to purely personal acts and rarely and then only on critical occasions did he step forward to present himself before the whole body of students in the full dignity of his presidential office 
on these occasions which in the latter years hardly ever occurred he would quietly post an address to the students in which appealing only to the highest principles of conduct he sought to dissuade them from threatened evil the addresses which the boys designated as his general orders were always of immediate efficacy no single case ever occurred in which they failed of instant and complete effect and no student would have been tolerated by his fellow students who would have dared to disregard such an appeal from general lee footnote professor joins in university monthly end note my father had recovered from the spell of sickness of the previous summer at the old sweet springs which had weakened and depressed him until about the time he attended my brother's wedding that marriage had been a great joy to him his trip there and back and his visits to brandon and hickory hill the change of climate and scene seeing old friends and new places had all contributed to benefit his health and spirits i remember this christmas of eighteen sixty seven he seemed particularly bright and cheerful i give a letter he wrote me after i had left for my home which reflects his playful humor and good spirits lexington virginia january twenty three eighteen sixty eight my dear robert i enclose a letter which has just arrived in the mail it seems to be from a nice young lady judging from the style and address i hope she is the right one and that her response is favourable put in a good crop and recollect you may have two to feed after harvest we are doing what we can in this region to supply the springs and streams that form the lowland rivers it is still raining though the snow and ice have not left us after your departure mr gordon brought to me a letter from fritz hugh to your mother which had come in the sunday mail and was overlooked among the papers i am sorry it had not been found before you left as you would have known their plans tell them i am sorry not to have seen them we miss you very much life has it all her own way now and expends her energy in regulating her brother and putting your mother's drawers and presses to rights is her only vent and furnishes exercise for body and mind there is to be a great fete in your mother's room to-day the grace church sewing society is to meet there at ten a m that is if the members are impervious to water i charge the two mildreds to be seated with their white aprons on and with scissors and thimbles in hand i hope they may have a refreshing time good-bye your father r e lee robert e lee the second mildred mentioned here was my father's niece daughter of charles carter lee she was living with my father at this time going to school and was like her cousin the other mildred not very fond of her needle his nickname for her was powity derived i presume from her native county of powhatan he was very fond of teasing her in this playful way indeed we all enjoyed that attention from him he never teased any one whom he did not specially like to his new daughter i find the following letter written at this time in which he shows his affection and admiration for her lexington virginia march tenth eighteen sixty eight my beautiful daughter i have been wishing to write to you for a long time but have supposed that you would be so engrossed with my sons with their plans and their projects that you would not lend an ear to your papa but now i must tell you how much i have thought of you how much i want to see you and how greatly i was disappointed at your not getting to see us at the time you proposed you must not postpone your visit too long or you may not find us here our winter which has been long and cold i hope now is over the gardeners are busy the grass is growing green and the atmosphere warm and inspiring i presume under its genial influence you and fitzhugh are busy improving your new home i hope everything is agreeable and that you are becoming more and more interested in making those around you happy that is the true way to secure your own happiness for which my poor prayers are daily offered to the throne of the most high i have been summoned to richmond the third thursday in this month as a witness in the trial against mr davis and though that will be a painful errand for me i hope that it will give me the pleasure of seeing you i will endeavour to get down some day to the white house if it is only to spend sunday with you i hope that you will be able to pay some attention to your poor brother robert do not let his elder brother monopolize you altogether 
you will have to take care of both till you can find some one like yourself to take roman coke in hand do you think miss ann bannister will consent mildred you know is the only one of the girls who has been with us this winter she has consequently had her hands full and considers herself now a great character she rules her brother and my nephews with an iron rod and scatters her advice broadcast among the young men of the college i hope that it may yield an abundant harvest the young mothers of lexington ought to be extremely grateful to her for her suggestions to them as to the proper mode of rearing their children and though she finds many unable to appreciate her system she is nothing daunted by their obtuseness of vision but takes advantage of every opportunity to enlighten them as to its benefits mary and agnes are still in baltimore and are now at the house of mrs charles howard agnes expects i believe to return to the peters near ellicott city and then go over to the eastern shore of maryland to visit the goldsboroughs and other friends i hardly think either of them will get back before june i have recently received a very pretty picture from a young lady of baltimore miss mary jones whom i met last summer at the white sulphur springs in one of my morning rides to the beaver dam falls near the sweet springs i found her at the foot of the falls making a sketch of the scene and on her return home she finished it and has sent it to me it is beautifully painted and is a faithful representation of the falls i think you will be pleased with it when you come up and agree with me in the opinion that it is the principal ornament of our parlour i am sorry to inform you that your poor mamma has been suffering more than usual lately from her rheumatic pains she took cold in some way which produced a recurrence of her former pangs though she is in a measure now relieved we often wish for you and fitzhugh my only pleasure is in my solitary evening rides which give me abundant opportunity for quiet thought with a great deal of love to your husband i am your sincerely attached father r e lee mrs william h fitzhugh lee the next letter i find is a reply to one of mine in which i evidently had been confiding to him my agricultural woes lexington virginia march twelfth eighteen sixty eight my dear rob i am sorry to learn from your letter of the first that the winter has been so hard on your wheat i hope however the present good weather is shedding its influence upon it and that it will turn out better than it promises you must however take a lesson from the last season what you do cultivate do well improve and prepare the land in the best manner your labour will be less and your profits more your flat lands were always uncertain in wet winters the uplands were more sure is it not possible that some unbidden guest may have been feasting on your corn six hundred bushels are a large deficit in casting up your accounts for the year but you must make it up by economy and good management a farmer's motto should be toil and trust i am glad that you have got your lime and sown your oats and clover do you use the drill or sow broadcast i shall try to get down to see you if i go to richmond for i am anxious to know how you are progressing and to see if in any way i can aid you whenever i can you must let me know you must still think about your house and make up your mind as to the site and kind and collect the material i can help you to any kind of plan and with some ready money to pay the mechanics i have recently had a visit from dr oliver of scotland who is examining lands for immigrants from his country he seems to be a sensible and judicious man from his account i do not think the scotch and english would suit your part of the country it would require time for them to become acclimated and they would probably get dissatisfied especially as there is so much mountainous region where they could be accommodated i think you will have to look to the germans perhaps the hollanders as a class would be the most useful when the railroad shall have been completed to west point i think there will be no difficulty in getting the whites among you i would try to get some of your own young men in your employ i rode out the other day to mr andrew cameron's and went into the field where he was ploughing i took great pleasure in following the ploughs around the circuit he had four in operation three of them were held by his former comrades in the army who are regularly employed by him and he says much to his satisfaction and profit people have got to work now 
it is creditable to them to do so their bodies and their minds are benefited by it and those who can and will work will be advanced by it you will never prosper with the blacks and it is abhorrent to a reflecting mind to be supporting and cherishing those who are plotting and working for your injury and all of whose sympathies and associations are antagonistic to yours i wish them no evil in the world on the contrary will do them every good in my power and know that they are misled by those to whom they have given their confidence but our material social and political interests are naturally with the whites mr davis's trial was fixed for the last of this month if judge chase's presence is essential i do not see how it can take place unless that of mr johnson is to be postponed i suppose that will be decided to-day or to-morrow and then i shall know what to expect i shall not go to richmond unless necessary as it is always inconvenient for me to leave home and i am not at all well your poor mother is also more ailing than she is ordinarily in consequence of a cold she has taken but it is passing away i trust i must leave you to her and mildred for all local and domestic news custis and the boys are well and powity i hope has got rid of the chills we hear regularly from mary and agnes who seem to be enjoying themselves and i do not think from their programme that they will get back to us till summer all unite in much love and i am always your father r e lee this same month he writes a long letter to his daughter agnes who was visiting friends in baltimore the annette mildred and mary he mentions in this letter were the daughters of charles henry carter of goodwood maryland a first cousin of my father lexington virginia march twenty eighth eighteen sixty eight my precious agnes i was so glad to receive your letter to learn that you were well and enjoying yourself among pleasant friends i hope that you will soon get through all your visits and come home your uncle smith says you girls ought to marry his sons as you both find it so agreeable to be from home and you could then live a true bohemian life and have a happy time generally but i do not agree with him i shall not give my consent so you must choose elsewhere i have written to annette telling her of my alarm for her now that mildred is engaged and she sees how much mary is in love i fear she will pick up an adonis next so that she had better run away to the mountains at once i am glad that you saw mr davis it is a terrible thing to have this prosecution hanging over him and to be unable to fix his thoughts on a course of life or apply his hands to the support of his family but i hope a kind providence will shield and guide him you must remember me to all my friends the taggarts glens mckins marshalls etc as to the young ladies you mention you must tell them that i want to see them very much and hope that they will all come to the mountains this summer and not pass us by in lexington when you go to goodwood and the eastern shore do the same there for me and present me to all by name tell sweet sally warwick i think she ought to come to lexington if only to show those babies but in truth i want to see her more than them so she may leave them with major poor footnote her husband end note if she chooses you must see everybody you wish and enjoy yourself as much as you can and then come home i told mildred to tell you if you wanted any funds you must let me know and where to send them i do not know whether she delivered my message she has become very imperious and may not think you require any she has been much exercised of late on the score of servants but hopes to get some relief on the first proximo from the promised change of miss mary dixon to miss eliza cyrus i hope her expectations may be realized little mildred has had a return of her chills it has been a sharp attack and though it has been arrested when i left her this morning i feared she might have a relapse as this is her regular day she was looking remarkably well before it came on better than she had ever done but every cold terminates in this way however slight it may be colds have been quite prevalent and there have been two deaths among the cadets from pneumonia fortunately so far the students have escaped i am relieved of mine i hope and your poor mother is i hope better the storm seems to have subsided and i trust the bright weather may ameliorate her pains 
custis mildred and the boys are well as are most of our friends in lexington fitzhugh writes that everything is blooming at the white house and that his wheat is splendid i am in hopes that it is all due to the presence of my fair daughter rob says that things at roman coke are not so prosperous you see there is no mrs r e lee jr there and that may make the difference cannot you persuade some of those pretty girls in baltimore to take compassion on a poor bachelor i will give them a plan for a house if they will build it all would unite with me in love if they knew i was writing you ought to be here to enjoy the birds captain o c h sends us with much love for yourself and my poor prayers for your happiness i am your devoted father r e lee a few days afterward he writes to his son fitzhugh who was now established very happily in his new house and warns him not to depend entirely on sentiment but to arrange for something material he also speaks of mr davis and his trial which was continually being postponed and in the end was dismissed and gives him some good advice about importing cattle lexington virginia march thirty eighteen sixty eight my dear fitzhugh i was very glad to receive your letter of the nineteenth and as you are aware of the order of the court postponing mr davis's trial till the fourteenth proximo i presume that you have not been expecting me down i see it stated in the washington star that the trial is again postponed till may fourth but i have seen as yet no order from the court mr and mrs davis went from baltimore to new york on tuesday last and were to go on to canada he said that he did not know what he should do or what he could turn his hands to for a support as long as this trial is hanging over him of course he can do nothing he can apply his mind to nothing nor could he acquire the confidence of the business community in anything he might undertake from the apprehension of his being interrupted in the midst of it agnes and mary saw them as they passed through baltimore they say mr davis was well though he had changed a great deal since they saw him last i am very glad that you are so pleased with your house i think it must be my daughter that gives it such a charm i am sure that she will make everything look bright to me it is a good thing that the wheat is doing so well for i am not sure that the flame you are so rich in will light a fire in the kitchen nor the little god turn the spit 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 some material element is necessary to make it burn brightly and furnish some good dishes for the table shad are good in their way but they do not run up the pamunkey all the year i am glad that you are making arrangements for some cows and think you are right in getting those of the best breed it used to be thought that cows from the north would not prosper in that lower country and indeed cows from the upper part of virginia did not succeed well but were apt to become sick and die and that the surest process to improve the stock was to purchase calves of good breed and cross on the native stock you must therefore be careful and not invest too much we have had a cold winter and march has been particularly harsh still vegetation is progressing and the wheat around lexington looks beautiful my garden is advancing in a small way peas spinach and onions look promising but my hotbed plants are poor the new house about which you inquire is in a statu quo before winter i believe the money is wanting and the workmen cannot proceed we require some of that latter article here as elsewhere and have but little i heard of you in richmond the other day but did not learn whether my daughter was with you i wish you would send her up to her papa when you go away with much love your devoted father r e lee a month later he writes me telling me that he expects to be in richmond the following week and will try to get down to see us also telling of his garden and horse and as he always did encouraging cheering me and offering help lexington virginia april twenty five eighteen sixty eight my dear rob your letter of the twenty first is just received i am very glad that your wheat is improving in appearance and hope that at harvest it will yield a fair return for your care and labor your corn i am sure will be more remunerative than the crop of last year and i trust that at the end of the year you will find you have advanced in the field of agriculture your mule and provender was a heavy loss you must make it up 
replace the first by a good one and i will pay for it i hope the warm sun will bring forward the grass to supply the latter should i go to richmond next week as i now expect i will be prepared to pay for the mule and if i do not i will send you a check for the amount i am sorry to hear that you have not been well you must get out of that too you must refresh yourself when you can by going up to the white house to see your brother and sister take a good look at the latter for me in our garden nothing is up but the hardy plants peas potatoes spinach onions etc beets carrots salsify etc have been sown a long time but are not up and i cannot put in the beans squash etc or set out the hotbed plants but we can wait i have not been as well this winter as usual and have been confined of late i have taken up traveller however who is as rough as a bear and have had two or three rides on him in the mud which i think has benefited me mildred sometimes accompanies me your mother i am glad to say is better she has less pain than when i last wrote and is more active on her crutches good-bye my dear son if i go to richmond i will try to get to see you affectionately your father r e lee r e lee jr my father came to richmond summoned to attend the trial of mr davis but when he arrived he found that it was again postponed so he went to the white house and spent several days i came up from romancoke and stayed with him till he left it was a great pleasure to him to meet his sons and to see his new daughter in her new home after his return to lexington he wrote to her this letter lexington virginia may twenty nine eighteen sixty eight my dear daughter i have been enjoying in memory ever since my return my visit to the pamunkey and whenever i have thought of writing to you the pleasure i experienced in your company and in that of fitzhugh and robert absorbed the moment i could devote to a letter and other calls made me postpone it but i have thought of you often and always with renewed pleasure and i rejoice at your having around you more comforts and within your reach more pleasures than i had anticipated i pray that both may be increased and be long continued there is one thing i regret that you are so far from us i know the difficulty of farmers and their wives leaving home their success and in a measure their pleasure depend upon their daily attention to their affairs and it is almost an impossibility for us old people to get to you yet i trust we may meet this summer some time and whenever you can you must come and see us our small house will never be so full that there will not be room for you or so empty that you will not be most cordially welcome letters received from mary and agnes report them still on the eastern shore of maryland where they were detained by the sickness of agnes they expected however to be able to return to baltimore last tuesday twenty sixth where after a few days sojourn they were to go to mrs washington peters i fear however that agnes might not have been well enough as she had had an attack of bilious fever and was much prostrated should you find yourself in danger of becoming sick you must come right up to your papa i know you will pine but i would rather you should suffer in that way than burn with fever and while on that subject i will tell you something that may be of comfort you may reasonably expect fitzhugh soon to follow so you will not suffer long i wish to take your mamma to the warm springs and to the hot or healing if she will go to try to obtain for her some relief but we will not leave home till the last of june or first of july i am so much occupied that i feel that i ought never to go away and every absence accumulates my work i had a pleasant visit of three days to lynchburg attending the episcopal convention and i have not yet brought up my correspondence etc i fear too i shall have to go to richmond next week as everything seems to portend the certainty of mr davis's trial god grant that like the impeachment of mr johnson it may be dismissed if i do go i fear i shall have no time to visit you the examinations of the senior classes of the college are now in progress and after their completion the examination of the undergraduates will commence and will not terminate till the fifteenth of june and the commencement exercises then begin and end on the eighteenth so you see how necessary it is for me to be here and that i shall be obliged to hasten back as soon as permitted 
i wanted if possible to pass one day at shirley i have not been there for ten years it was the loved home of my mother and a spot where i have passed many happy days in early life and one that probably i may never visit again but i do not know that i shall be able we are all as usual and all would send much love if they knew i was writing mildred is very happy in the company of miss charlotte hexall and custis retains his serenity of character our young members of the family are looking forward to their return to powhatan as soon as the college exercises close which i hope will bring some relief to me also i see that you have been much visited of late but you know that no one wants to see you as much as i do tell fitzhugh that his old friend miss helen peters has come to lexington from new york to pass the summer see what an attractive place it is becoming she is now mrs taylor and has brought with her two babies she is as cordial and as affectionate as ever give much love to fitzhugh and rob and believe me always your devoted father r e lee mrs william h fitzhugh lee my father was back at the college in full time for the final examinations he always made it a point to be present and took his full share of sitting in the rooms while the students were working out their papers when occasion offered somewhat to the surprise of the learned faculty he showed himself thoroughly conversant with each and every department even with greek he seemed somewhat familiar and would question the students as to their knowledge of this language much to their astonishment the commencement exercises of the college began about june first and lasted a week at this time the town was crowded with visitors and my father had his house full generally of young girls friends of my sisters who came to assist at the final ball the great social event connected with this college exercise he seemed to enjoy their society as much as the young men did though he could not devote so much time to them as the boys did and i know that the girls enjoyed his society more than they did that of their college adorers on the occasion of an entertainment at his house in going amongst his guests saying to each group something bright and pleasant he approached a young lady a great belle completely surrounded by her admirers students cadets and some old confeds he stopped and began to rally her on her conquest saying you can do as you please to these other young gentlemen but you must not treat any of my old soldiers badly those who have never known him cannot imagine the charm of his manner the brightness of his smile and the pleasant way he had of speaking especially to young people and little children his rebukes to the young were administered in the kindest gentlest way almost persuasively but he could be stern when the occasion demanded colonel william preston johnston a member of his faculty and a very dear and trusted friend says in his intercourse with his faculty he was courteous kind and often rather playful in manner we all thought he deferred entirely too much to the expression of opinion on the part of the faculty when we would have preferred that he should simply indicate his own views or desire one characteristic of general lee i noted then and have often recalled i never saw him take an ungraceful posture no matter how long or fatiguing a faculty meeting might be he always preserved an attitude in which dignity decorum and grace were united he was a very well-built man with rounded body and limbs and seemed without the slightest affectation of effort to sit or stand or walk just as a gentleman should he was never in a hurry and all his gestures were easy and significant he was always an agreeable companion there was a good deal of bonhomie and pleasantry in his conversation he was not exactly witty nor was he very humorous though he gave a light turn to table talk and enjoyed exceedingly any pleasantry or fun even he often made a quaint or slightly caustic remark but he took care that it should not be too trenchant on reading his letters one discovers this playful spirit in many of them as for instance in his letter to the spiritualist who asked his opinion of von moltke and the french war he wrote in reply a most courteous letter in which he said that the question was one about which military critics would differ that his own judgment about such matters was poor at best 
and that inasmuch as they had the power to consult through their mediums caesar alexander napoleon wellington and all of the other great captains who had ever lived he could not think of obtruding his opinion in such company general lee did not talk politics but he felt very deeply the condition of the country and expressed to me several times in strong terms his disapproval of the course of the dominant party there is a story told of my father which points to his playful manner here alluded to at a certain faculty meeting they were joking mr harris who so long and so ably filled the chair of latin about his walking up the aisle of the presbyterian church with the stem of his pipe protruding from his pocket mr harris took out the offending stem and began cutting it shorter my father who had been enjoying the incident said no mr harris don't do that next time leave it at home sometimes he deemed it advisable to be a little stern one of the young professors went off for a few days without asking the president's permission on his return the general met him very stiffly saying mr blank i congratulate you on your return to your friends and your duties i was not aware of your absence until i heard it by chance mr blank told this on himself and added that it was the last time he ever went away without a formal leave of absence his particularity in little things has often been commented on he applied it to all his affairs dr kirkpatrick a professor of moral philosophy came into the president's office and asked for a certain paper my father told him where it could be found after a while turning to the doctor he said did you find the paper yes general replied the doctor did you return it to the place where you found it yes general at another time he asked professor harris to look at a catalogue on the table the professor took up a new one wrapped ready for the mail and was about to tear the cover off when my father hastily handing him one already open said take this if you please my mother used to say that he could go in the dark and lay his hand on any article of his clothing or upon any particular paper after he had once arranged them provided they had not been disturbed one of his quaint or slightly caustic remarks alluded to by colonel johnston i recall as told to me he met a lady friend down in the town who bitterly complained that she could get nothing to eat in lexington suitable for lent no fish no oysters etc mrs blank the general replied i would not trouble myself so much about special dishes i suppose if we try to abstain from special sins that is all that will be expected of us End of chapter seventeen chapter eighteen of recollections and letters of general robert e lee by robert e lee jr this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter eighteen mrs r e lee goes to warm springs for rheumatism her daughter mildred takes typhoid there removes to hot springs her husband's devotion visit of fitzhugh and bride to lexington miss jones a would-be benefactor of washington college fate of washington relics belonging to mrs lee's family that summer my father determined to take my mother to the warm springs in bath county virginia hoping that the baths there might be of service to her and purposing if she was not benefited to go to the hot springs five miles distant he was most anxious that his new daughter should join her there and go with him to any place she might select and come back with them to lexington in the following letter to his son he tells of his plans for the summer lexington virginia july one eighteen sixty eight my dear fitzhugh i received yesterday your letter of the twenty eighth ultimo and i regret very much to learn of tad's indisposition i hope that she will soon be well and i wish very much she would join us in the mountains and return here with us in my letter to her about the time when she went to her sister's wedding which i hope she got i told her of my wishes on this subject and believe gave her our general plans i can now say with more distinctness that unless something now unforeseen should prevent i will take your mother to the warm springs from the tenth to the fifteenth instant and after trying the water there about two weeks if not favourable will take her over to the hot 
after seeing her comfortably established i will then go anywhere tab desires to the healing or the white sulphur or sweet i intend to go myself to the white sulphur for about a fortnight to drink the water and will take mildred with me agnes having gone last summer will not care to go i presume and can remain with her mother mildred has been quite sick for the past week but is now much better and in a week will be strong enough for the journey i think if not we shall have to delay our departure a little agnes was also sick on the eastern shore of maryland about three weeks and i am told looks badly she is now at the university of virginia and will be home in a few days and go with us to the springs you must arrange your plans to suit your interests and convenience coming to us when you can and staying as long as you can you know the interest i take in your prosperity and advancement which cannot be assured without earnest attention to your business on your part and therefore i never urge you to act contrary to your own judgment in reference to them as to my daughter tab tell her if she will trust herself to her papa she shall never want anything he can do for her and i think she will find the prediction in my letter to her verified she might join us at goshen and go with us or come here why did she not come up with her father i went to see him last evening but he was out your mother i presume has told you of home affairs she has become nervous of late and broods over her troubles so much that i fear it increases her sufferings i am therefore the more anxious to give her new scenes and new thoughts it is the principal good i anticipate love to rob custis still talks of visiting you but i have not heard of his having fixed the day of his departure he is quite well with my best love to my daughter t and the same to yourself i am most affectionately your father r e lee the morning he left lexington he while waiting for the stage writes as follows to a great favourite of his a friend of mildred's who had been on a visit to her that summer lexington virginia july fourteenth eighteen sixty eight the stage is at the door to carry us to goshen and if mrs lee's strength permits we hope to reach the warm springs to-night after two or three weeks trial of its waters we shall go to the hot where leaving agnes to take care of her mother i shall take mildred to the white sulphur and hope to meet you at cummington and carry you along will you not come mildred is quite well again and is flying about this morning with great activity agnes is following with slower steps mrs lee is giving her last injunctions to sam and eliza letitia footnote my mother's maid end note, is looking on with wonder at the preparations and trying to get a right conception of the place to which she is going which she seems to think is something between a steel trap and a spring gun custis is waiting to help his mother into the stage and you see how patient i am to add interest to the scene dr barton has arrived to bid adieu and to give mildred an opportunity of looking her best i believe he is the last rose of summer the others with their fragrance and thorns have all departed a few days after their arrival at the warm springs mildred was taken ill with typhoid fever and during many anxious weeks my father and agnes were her only nurses my mother's room was on the first floor of the brockenborough cottage my sister's in the second so she could not get upstairs to her room mildred was very fanciful would have no one but my father to nurse her and could not sleep unless she had his hand in hers night after night he sat by her side watching over her and attending to every want with gentleness and patience he writes to the same young lady at mildred's request warm springs virginia july thirty eighteen sixty eight she mildred has been so anxious to write to you and so uneasy at her inability to do so that i hope you will permit me to tell you the reason she has been quite sick and is so still confined to her bed with low fever which retains its hold very pertinaciously she took cold a few days after our arrival from some imprudence and is now very much enfeebled she has been more comfortable the last day or two and i hope is better but i presume her recovery will necessarily be slow you know she is very fanciful and as she seems to be more accessible to reason from me i have come to be her chief nurse and am now writing in her room while she is sleeping 
this is a beautiful valley and we have quite a pleasant company mr and mrs chapman and their three daughters from alabama mrs coleman and her two daughters from baltimore some ladies from richmond washington kentucky iowa etc and an ever-changing scene of faces as soon as mildred is strong enough we will go to the hot after which if she desires it i will take her to the white mrs lee and agnes are improving slightly i am glad to say we hear of many friends at the hot healing and white and hope we shall reach these respective waters before they depart the harrisons have written me that they will be here on the fourteenth proximo but unless mildred's recovery is much retarded it will be too late for me to see them the caskies will be at the hot about the same time i am yours most sincerely r e lee on august third from the same place he writes to my brother fitzhugh this was the day i had appointed to go to the hot but mildred is too sick to move she was taken more than a fortnight since and her attack seems to have partaken of a typhoid character she has had since a low and persistent fever which retains its hold she is very feeble but in the doctor's opinion somewhat better i myself see little change except that she is now free from pain i cannot speak of our future movements i fear i shall have to abandon my visit to the white your mother and agnes are better than when they arrived the former bathes freely eats generously and sleeps sweetly agnes though feeble is stronger i am the same and can see no effects of the waters upon myself give much love to my sweet daughter and dear sons all unite with me in this message i am as ever and always your father r e lee another letter to my brother fitzhugh from the warm springs tells of his daughter's convalescence smith's island of which he writes belonged to my grandfather's estate of which my father was executor he was trying to make some disposition of it so that it might yield a revenue it is situated on the atlantic just east of cape charles in northampton county virginia warm springs virginia august fourteenth eighteen sixty eight my dear fitzhugh i received yesterday your letter of the ninth and as your mother informed you of mildred's condition i deferred replying to it until to-day i am glad to inform you that she is better and that the doctor pronounces her convalescent this morning he says her progress must necessarily be slow but with care and prudence he sees nothing to prevent her recovery unless something unforeseen occurs i hope therefore we may dismiss our anxiety as regards smith's island i should be very glad if you could go over and see it and if you think proper make such disposition of it as you and robert think most advantageous see mr hamilton s neal eastville northampton county virginia and consult with him on the subject and let me know your determination i think you will find him kind and intelligent i have visited the island twice in my life a long while ago and thought that if a person lived on it he might by grazing planting and fishing make a comfortable living you and robert might if you choose buy the island from the estate i fear the timber etc has been cut from it i never thought it as valuable as your grandfather did you will have to go to norfolk take the steamer to cherrystone where i suppose you can find a conveyance to eastville you know cobb's island has been a fashionable bathing place john lewis wrote that the beach was delightful and fair excellent and that they had sail vessels there at the disposal of visitors but mr neal and mr john simpkins the present agent can put you in the way of visiting the island and you might carry my sweet daughter tab over and give her a surf bath but do not let the mosquitoes annoy her give her much love from me i am writing in mildred's room who is very grateful for your interest in her behalf she is too weak to speak i hope rob had a pleasant trip tell me custis's plans i have not heard from him your mother and agnes unite in love to you rob and tab i have a fan in one hand while i wield the pen with the other so excuse brevity most affectionately yours r e lee p s george and eleanor goldsborough and miss mary g express themselves as much pleased with cobb's island i do not know how far it is east of smith's island r e lee 
his daughter being convalescent he carried out his plan and went over to the white sulphur springs after he had placed my mother and sisters at the hot springs in a letter from there on august twenty eighth he writes the place looks beautiful the bells very handsome and the bows very happy all are gay and only i solitary i am all alone there was a grand fancy masked ball last night the room was overflowing the music good as much spring in the boards as in the conversation and the german continued till two o'clock this morning i return to the hot next week and the following to lexington mildred is much better but says she has forgotten how to write i hope that she will be strong enough to return with me i am truly and affectionately yours r e lee they all returned to lexington early in september in time for the opening of the college mildred was still weak and nervous nor did she recover her normal strength for several months she was always my father's pet as a little girl and during this illness and convalescence he had been very tender with her humouring as far as he could all of her fancies not long before that christmas she enumerated just in fun all the presents she wished a long list to her great surprise when christmas morning came she found each article at her place at the breakfast-table not one omitted his sympathy with all who were suffering ill and afflicted was warm and sincere colonel ship now superintendent of the virginia military institute was the commandant of cadets when my father came to lexington he tells me that he was ill for some weeks laid up in his room which was next to that of my brother custis he hardly knew general lee and had spoken to him only a few times but my father went to see him quite often and would sit by him talk to him and seemed much interested in his getting well he said he would consult mrs lee who is a great doctor and he finally brought a bottle of something in which suitor berries were the chief ingredient colonel ship found out afterward that the suitor berries had been sent from the white house and that my mother had concocted the medicine on one occasion calling at colonel preston's he missed two little boys in the family circle who were great favourites of his and on asking for them he was told that they were confined to the nursery by croup the next day though the weather was of the worst description he went trudging in great storm boots back to their house carrying in one hand a basket of pecan nuts and in the other a toy which he left for his little sick friends to my mother who was a great invalid from rheumatism for more than ten years he was the most faithful attendant and tender nurse every want of hers that he could supply he anticipated his considerate forethought saved her from much pain and trouble during the war he constantly wrote to her even when on the march and amidst the most pressing duties every summer of their life in lexington he arranged that she should spend several months at one of the many medicinal springs in the neighbouring mountains as much that she might be surrounded by new scenes and faces as for the benefit of the waters whenever he was in the room the privilege of pushing her wheelchair into the dining-room and out on the verandas or elsewhere about the house was yielded to him he sat with her daily entertaining her with accounts of what was going on in the college and the news of the village and would often read to her in the evening for her his love and care never ceased his gentleness and patience never ended this tenderness for the sick and helpless was developed in him when he was a mere lad his mother was an invalid and he was her constant nurse in her last illness he mixed every dose of medicine she took and was with her night and day if he left the room she kept her eyes on the door till he returned he never left her but for a short time after her death the health of their faithful servant nat became very bad my father then just graduated from west point took him to the south had the best medical advice a comfortable room and everything that could be done to restore him and attended to him himself i can find very few family letters written by my father at this time those which have been preserved are to my brother fitzhugh and are mostly about smith's island and the settling up of my grandfather's estate the last of september he writes lexington virginia september twenty eighth eighteen sixty eight my dear fitzhugh 
your report of the condition of smith's island corresponds with my own impressions based upon my knowledge of the island and the reports of others i think it would be advantageous under present circumstances to make sale of the island as soon as a fair price can be obtained and i have so instructed mr hamilton s neal who has consented to act as my agent i should like this whole matter arranged as soon as possible for my life is very uncertain and its settlement now may avoid future difficulties i am very glad to hear that you and rob have continued well and that my daughter is improving give my love to them both the loss of your fine cows is a serious one and i believe you will have to procure them in your vicinity and improve them get some calves this fall of a good breed we hope that we shall see you this fall your mother is as comfortable as usual and mildred is improving custis mary and agnes are well and all would send love did they know i was writing very affectionately your father r e lee this autumn he had a visit from his nephew edward lee child edward lived in paris and had crossed over in the summer to see my father and mother he made a very pleasant impression on everybody and was much pleased with his visit here is a letter written by my father to my brother just after edward left lexington virginia october fourteenth eighteen sixty eight my dear fitzhugh i have returned to mr hamilton s neal the advertisement of the sale of smith's island with my approval and have requested him to advertise in the northern and richmond papers etc and to send out such other notices as he seems best calculated to attract attention to the property and to take every measure to enhance the value of the island and to procure for your grandfather's estate the full benefit of the sale i have heard from mr compton that my daughter tab has returned to the white house in improved health which i am very glad of i hope that you will soon be able to bring her up to see us do not wait until the weather becomes too cold our mountain atmosphere in winter is very harsh so far the weather has been delightful your cousin edward left us last thursday evening on his way to see you we enjoyed his visit greatly agnes and i rode down to the baths last saturday to see the harrisons and returned sunday evening they were well and somewhat benefited by their visit mr george ritchie's death no doubt threw a shade of sadness over the whole party on mrs harrison's account though all were charming and miss bell very sweet we are about the same your poor mother comfortable mildred improving all would unite in love to you and yours did they know i was writing give much love to my dear daughter tab and tell her that i want to see her very much truly and affectionately your father r e lee general w h fitzhugh lee in a few days he writes again still about smith's island but adds much about the family and friends lexington virginia october nineteenth eighteen sixty eight my dear fitzhugh i received your letter of the twelfth the day i last wrote to you i am glad we agree that blank should be the minimum limit for the price of smith's island you will see by my letter referred to that it has been so fixed december twenty second is the day proposed by mr neal as the time of public sale which was approved by me though i feared the notice might be too short still there are good reasons for the sale being made without unnecessary delay i think november which you suggest would not afford sufficient notice i would recommend that you and robert attend the sale and be governed by circumstances in what you do i would go myself but it would be a long hard journey for me at that season of the year and i do not see any material good that i can do mr neal kindly offered to meet me at cherry stone landing and take me to his house but i shall decline in your favour i am sorry that edward did not get down to see you for i wanted him to see my daughter tab i am sure he has seen none like her in paris he left here with the purpose of visiting you and his uncle smith and i do not know what made him change his mind i hope that you will get in a good crop of wheat and get it in well the latter is very important and unless accomplished may deprive you of the whole benefit of your labour and expense we shall look anxiously for your visit do not put it off too late or the weather may be unfavourable our mountain country is not the most pleasant in cold weather but we will try and make you warm give my love to tab and tell her i am waiting to see her all the time all unite in love to her and you your mother is about the same very busy and full of work mildred is steadily improving and is able to ride on horseback which she is beginning to enjoy 
mary and agnes very well we see but little of custis he has joined the mess at the institute which he finds very comfortable so that he rarely comes to our table to breakfast now the rest of the time he seems to be occupied with his classes and studies remember me to rob i hear of a great many weddings but his has not been announced yet he must not forget his house i have not and am going to take up the plan very soon mildred says a good house is an effective card in the matrimonial game she is building a castle in the air the harrisons propose leaving the baths to-morrow george arrived a week ago i did not get down saturday to see them as i wished i hope the health of the whole party has been improved i wish i could spend this month with you that lower country is delightful to me at this season and i long to be on the water again but it cannot be with much love r e lee general william h fitzhugh lee the last of october he went to staunton on some business he rode traveller and colonel william allen rode with him it was the time of the augusta agricultural fair and while there he visited the exhibition and was received by the people with great demonstrations of delight a student standing by remarked dryly i don't see why the staunton people make all this to do over general lee why in lexington he sends for me to come to see him in a letter of november second he mentions his little journey i have recently paid a visit to staunton and saw the young people there they seemed very happy in their fair and the bows with their bells i rode over on traveller and was accompanied by colonel allen the former was delighted at the length of the road and the latter relieved from an obstinate cold from which he was suffering on the second morning just as the knights were being marshalled to prove their prowess and devotion we commenced our journey back to lexington which we reached before nine p m under the light of a beautiful moon at this time his son fitzhugh and his new daughter paid their long-promised visit which he enjoyed immensely my mother and sisters were charmed with her and the entire community vied in paying her attention my father was proud of his daughter-in-law and much gratified at his son's marriage he was delighted with the manner in which she adapted herself to the ways of all her new relations with her sweet attention to my mother and above all with her punctuality she had been warned beforehand by her husband that to please his father she must be always ready for family prayers which were read every morning by him just before breakfast this she succeeded in doing never failing once to be on time as breakfast was at seven o'clock it was no small feat for one not accustomed to such early hours she said afterwards that she did not believe that general lee would have an entirely high opinion of any person even general washington if he could return to earth if he were not ready for prayers after a delightful visit of three weeks my brother and his wife returned home just as the latter was packing my father came into her room and filled all the space in the top of her trunk with pecan nuts which some friend had sent him from the south the hour fixed for the service in the college chapel was as i have said a quarter to eight o'clock every morning except sunday in the three winter months december january and february it was one hour later as the president never failed to attend when not prevented by sickness or absence it was necessary to have an early breakfast after chapel he went to his office and was seated at his desk by eight o'clock where he remained unless called out by public business till two p m this room was open to all in the college who had business with him the new students were required to report to him here in person and from their first interviews he obtained a knowledge of the young men of which he availed himself in their future career in the college as president he was always disposed to be lenient with the students who were reported for disorderly conduct or for failure in their studies or duties he would say to the faculty when they seemed to think it necessary to send a student home don't you think it would be better to bear with him a little longer perhaps we may do him some good being sent for to this office was anything but pleasant to the students lewis one of the janitors went around with the names of those the president wanted to see written by his own hand on a long slip of paper he carried the paper in one hand a pencil in the other and when he could find the one he wanted in a crowd of his comrades he took special pleasure in serving his notice and would say in his solemn sepulchral voice mr Blank, the president wants to see you at the office 
then mr blank took the pencil and made a cross mark opposite his name which was evidence of his having received his summons what transpired at these interviews was seldom known except as the student himself might reveal it for unless it became necessary to summon the delinquent a second time the president never alluded to the subject an old student writes me the following account of his experience in the president's office i was a frolicsome chap at college and having been absent from class an unreasonable number of times was finally summoned to the general's office abject terror took possession of me in the presence of such wise and quiet dignity the reasons i had carefully prepared to give for my absence stood on their heads or toppled over in reply to general lee's grave but perfectly polite question i stammered out a story about a violent illness and then conscious that i was at that moment the picture of health i hastened on with something about leaving my boots at the cobbler's when general lee interrupted me stop mr m he said stop sir one good reason is enough but i could not be mistaken about the twinkle in the old hero's eyes only a few cases required more than one summons to appear at the office no instance is known where a student complained of injustice or harshness and the effect on his mind was that of greater respect and admiration for the president the new house was approaching completion and my father was much interested in the work going there very often and discussing with the workmen their methods that christmas i spent two weeks in lexington and many times my father took me all over the new building explaining all the details of his plan all of his family were here together this christmas except fitzhugh and his wife an occurrence rather rare of late years my father's health was unusually good and he was bright and almost gay he rode out often taking me with him and it was too cold for the girls he also took me around with him visiting and in the mild festivities of the neighbors he joined with evident pleasure my visit ended all too soon and the first week of january i started back to the low country soon after my departure he forwarded a letter to me with the accompanying one of his own lexington virginia january fourteenth eighteen sixty nine my dear rob the accompanying letter was enclosed to me by lawrence butler footnote the grandson of nelly custis my grandfather's sister who married lawrence lewis the favorite nephew of washington End note. with the request that i would forward it as he did not know your address and urge you to be present at his wedding i do not know that i can say more except to inform you that he says he has the very girl for you if you will come on you must therefore decide the question according to your best judgment general hoke from north carolina has also sent you his wedding cards we have missed you very much since your departure and wished you back i hope you got home comfortably and found all well drive all your work with judgment and energy and when you have decided about the house let me know tell fitzhugh i have signed the insurance policy and sent it to mr wickham for his signature with the request that he forward it to grubb and williams the weather still continues pleasant and i fear we shall suffer for it by the late spring there has so far been a great lack of snow and consequently the wheat is exposed to the great changes of temperature we are all as you left us custis i think looks better no news mail heavy this morning love to f and t with great affection your father r e lee r e lee jr some one wrote to general lee suggesting that general grant then the president of the united states should be invited to washington college his reply was as follows lexington virginia january eighth eighteen sixty nine my dear sir i am much obliged to you for your letter of the twenty ninth ult which i am sure has been prompted by the best motives i should be glad if general grant would visit washington college and i should endeavor to treat him with the courtesy and respect due the president of the united states but if i were to invite him to do so it might not be agreeable to him and i fear my motives might be misunderstood at this time both by himself and others and that evil would result instead of good i will however bear your suggestion in mind and should a favorable opportunity offer i shall be glad to take advantage of it wishing you happiness and prosperity i am very respectfully your obedient servant r e lee 
a lady living in new york wrote to general lee in 1867 asking for a catalogue of washington college and a copy of its charter and laws she wished also to know whether or not the college was sectarian and if so of what denomination she intimated that she desired to make a donation to some institution of learning and was rather inclined to select the episcopal theological seminary near alexandria virginia the president sent her the following reply to her letter lexington virginia june twenty four eighteen sixty seven miss anne upshur jones number one fifty six lafayette avenue brooklyn new york my dear madam i have had the honour to receive your letter of the seventeenth instant and i send to your address a catalogue of washington college and a copy of its charter and laws on the thirty-seventh page of the former and the eleventh of the latter you will find what is prescribed on the subject of religion i do not know that it ever has been sectarian in its character since it was chartered as a college but it certainly is not so now located in a presbyterian community it is natural that most of its trustees and faculty should be of that denomination though the rector president and several of the professors are members of the episcopal church it is furthest from my wish to divert any donation from the theological seminary at alexandria for i am well acquainted with the merits of that institution have a high respect for its professors and am an earnest advocate of its object i only give you the information you desire and wish you to follow your own preferences in the matter with great respect your obedient servant r e lee in eighteen sixty nine she wrote again stating that she proposed breaking up housekeeping that she had no family to whom to give her books furniture and silver that she did not wish to sell them nor store them away and had therefore determined to present them to the greatest living man and she begged him to accept them or if his house was already furnished to make use of them in his college to this letter he replied lexington virginia february thirteenth eighteen sixty nine my dear miss jones after long and diligent inquiry i only this moment learned your address and have been during this time greatly mortified at my inability to acknowledge the receipt and disposition of your valuable and interesting donation to washington college the books were arranged in the library on their arrival the globes in the philosophical department while the furniture carpets sofas chairs etc have been applied to the furnishing of the dais of the audience room of the new chapel to the comfort and ornament of which they are a great addition i have yet made no disposition of the plate and tableware and they are still in the boxes in which they came i enclose the resolution of thanks passed by the board of trustees of the college at their annual meeting to which i beg to add my personal acknowledgments and a grateful sense of your favour and kindness to this institution it would give me great pleasure if you would visit lexington at the commencement in june next the third thursday that i might then show you the successful operation of the college mrs lee joins me in sentiments of esteem and regard praying that the great and merciful god may throw around you his protecting care and love i am with great respect your obedient servant r e lee miss anne upshur jones number thirty eight union square new york the plate tableware and a curious old work-table for which no place could be found in the college valuable only on account of their antiquity and quaintness he finally allowed to be called his own when my mother hurriedly left her home in the spring of eighteen sixty one she found it impossible to carry away the valuable relics of general washington which her father had inherited from mount vernon and which had been objects of great interest at arlington for more than fifty years after the federal authorities took possession of the place the most valuable of these mount vernon relics were conveyed to washington city and placed in the patent office where they remained on exhibition for many years labelled captured from arlington they were then removed to the national museum where they are now but the card has been taken off in eighteen sixty nine a member of congress suggested to my mother that she should apply to president johnson to have them restored to her in a letter from my father to this same gentleman this bit of quiet humour occurs lexington virginia february twelfth eighteen sixty nine mrs lee has determined to act upon your suggestion and apply to president johnson for such of the relics from arlington as are in the patent office 
from what i have learned a great many things formerly belonging to general washington bequeathed to her by her father in the shape of books furniture camp equipage etc were carried away by individuals and are now scattered over the land i hope the possessors appreciate them and may imitate the example of their original owners whose conduct must at times be brought to their recollection by these silent monitors in this way they will accomplish good to the country he refers to this same subject in a letter to the hon george w jones dubuque iowa in reference to certain articles which were taken from arlington about which you inquire mrs lee is indebted to our old friend captain james may for the order from the present administration for their restoration to her congress however passed a resolution forbidding their return they were valuable to her as having belonged to her great-grandmother mrs general washington and having been bequeathed to her by her father but as the country desires them she must give them up i hope their presence at the capitol will keep in the remembrance of all americans the principles and virtues of washington to the hon thomas lawrence jones who endeavoured to have the order to restore the relics to mrs lee executed the following letter of thanks was written lexington virginia march twenty nine eighteen sixty nine hon thomas lawrence jones washington city district of columbia my dear sir i beg to be allowed to tender you my sincere thanks for your efforts to have restored to mrs lee certain family relics in the patent office in washington the facts related in your speech in the house of representatives on the third instant so far as known to me are correct and had i conceived the view taken of the matter by congress i should have endeavoured to dissuade mrs lee from applying for them it may be a question with some whether the retention of these articles is more an insult in the language of the committee on public buildings to the loyal people of the united states than their restoration but of this i am willing that they should be the judge and since congress has decided to keep them she must submit however her thanks to you sir are not the less fervent for your kind intercession on her behalf and with highest regards i am with great respect your obedient servant r e lee washington's opinion of this transaction if it could be obtained would be of interest to many americans footnote these relics were restored to the family in nineteen o three by the order of president mckinley End note. End of chapter eighteen chapter nineteen of recollections and letters of general robert e lee by robert e lee jr this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter nineteen lee's letters to his sons the building of robert's house the general as a railroad delegate lionized in baltimore calls on president grant visits alexandria declines to be interviewed interested in his grandson the washington portraits my father being very anxious that i should build a good house on my farm had agreed to supply the necessary means and was interested in my plans and estimates in a letter of february eighteenth after a long and full explanation of the arrangements for the purchase of smith's island by fitzhugh and myself he writes i am glad that you are considering the construction of your house and taking steps in the matter let me know how you advance the amount of its cost etc and when i can help you the fine weather we have had this winter must have enabled you to advance in your farm work and put you ahead in that so that you will come out square i hope we are as usual your poor mother about the same the girls well and i tolerable all unite in much love truly and affectionately r e lee a week later he writes to me on the same subject lexington virginia february twenty seventh eighteen sixty nine my dear son i am glad you have obtained a good pair of oxen try to get another pair to work with them i will make good the deficit in my contribution your fences will be a great advantage to you and i am delighted at the good appearance of your wheat i hope it will continue to maturity it is very probable as you say however that it may fail in the grain should you find it so would it not be well next year to experiment with phosphates that must be the quality the land lacks have you yet heard from mr west about your house what are the estimates 
let me know the difficulty i fear now will be that the burning of the bricks may draw you away from your crops you must try not to neglect them what would the bricks cost if purchased ask f to cut the lumber for you i will furnish the funds to pay for it i hope the break in the mill may not prove serious and that you may be able to make up your delay in ploughing occasioned by the necessary hauling i am very glad to hear that you and f can visit each other so easily it will be advantageous to communicate with each other as well as a pleasure i suppose tab has not returned to the white house yet i am delighted to hear that she and her boy are so well they will make everything on the pamunkey shine we are all as usual general breckinridge footnote general john c breckinridge of kentucky ex-secretary of war of the confederate states had two sons at washington college at this time one of them was since united states minister at the court of st petersburg End note is on a visit to his sons and has been with us to-day he will return to baltimore monday he looks well seems cheerful and talks hopefully all unite in love to you and your acquaintances inquire regularly after you i think of you very often and wish i were nearer and could assist you custis is in better health this winter than he has been and seems content though his sisters look after him very closely i have no news and never have general b saw fitzhugh lee in alexandria he told him he was a great farmer now and when he was away his father who had now taken to the land showed uncommon signs of management good-bye my dear son may you enjoy every happiness praise your affectionate father r e lee robert e lee jr the completion of the railroad from the white house to west point made communication between fitzhugh and myself very easy on february eleventh my father had become the proud and happy possessor of a grandson which event gave him great joy mr west an architect of richmond had drawn me up plans and estimates for a house my father had also sent me a plan drawn by himself these plans i had submitted to several builders and sent their bids to him to examine and consider in the following letter he gives me his opinion lexington virginia march twenty one eighteen sixty nine my dear rob i have received your two letters of the third and ninth instance and would have answered the former before but had written a few days before its date and as our letters had been crossing each other i determined to let them get right first as to smith's island i merely want to fulfil the conditions of the sale as prescribed in the published notice i should have required them of any other purchasers and must require them of you now as for the house the estimates of your bidders are higher than i anticipated and i think too high by at least a thousand dollars you see there is about a thousand dollars difference between the highest and lowest of their offers you sent me what does f say about it i am confident that i could build that house here for but little over two thousand dollars including materials and i could do it there if i could get two good workmen but you are unaccustomed to building and i would not advise you to undertake it unless you could engage a proper foreman if therefore i were in your place i should reject all the offers unless the one you had not received when you wrote suited better i would not however give up my house but procure the bricks either by purchase or by making them on the ground as was most advantageous and the shingles in the same way and get all the lumber and flooring prepared while preparing the necessary materials i would see the builder that made the lowest offer or any other that i preferred and get him to revise his estimate and cut it down leaving him a margin for profit and when satisfied with his offer accept it and set him to work now as for the means i understand when you were here that you could manage the materials that is make arrangements for procuring the bricks lumber shingles and flooring indeed you might also get the lime and sand cheaper perhaps than the builder and make a deduction on his bill i can let you have funds to pay your contractor if i did not understand you rightly that is if you cannot procure the materials i can help you in them too in fact if you desire so much i can let you have the whole amount three thousand five hundred dollars you can have the use of it without interest and return it to me when i require it 
or sooner if you are able as i take it from the fund i was saving for a homestead for your mother at present i cannot use it and it is of no advantage to me except its possession will that suit you if it does not let me know what will and you shall have that too you must feel that it gives me pleasure to do anything i can for you and if i had only myself to consider you should have it unconditionally but i must consider one person above all i want you to do therefore just as you prefer i want you to have the comfort of a house but i do not wish to force upon you against your will or against your judgment i merely wish you to feel that you can procure one without inconveniencing me the only hesitation i have on the subject is that i think you ought to get a better house for three thousand five hundred dollars than i fear you will get the house according to the first plan in my opinion ought not to cost more than that sum but if you think the estimate is a fair one and are satisfied accept it and set to work but consult fitzhugh and let me know when you want the money and in what sums now that is plain i hope so keep this letter for reference as i have not time to take a copy we are all pretty well your mother has been troubled by a cold but is over it i hope the girls are well and have as many opinions about as few facts as ever and custis so so we have had accounts of lawrence butler's wedding and all were as gay as a flock of snowbirds they regretted your absence i will ask your mother to send you reports i am tolerable and wish i could get down to see you i had hoped to go down this spring but i fear that the dilatoriness of the workmen in finishing the house and the necessity of my attending to it getting the grounds enclosed and preparing the garden will prevent me i shall also have to superintend the moving in fact it never seems convenient for me to go away give much love to f my daughter tab and grandson i wonder what he will think of his grandpa all unite in love and i am as always your affectionate father r e lee robert e lee jr in april there are two letters written on the same day to each of his sons fitzhugh and myself i had determined for many reasons to postpone building my house for the present which decision my father regrets in the matter of smith's island the arrangement proposed by my brother and myself for its purchase was agreed to by him lexington virginia april seventeen eighteen sixty nine my dear rob i have written to fitzhugh informing him of my agreement to all the propositions in your joint letter which i hope will be satisfactory to you you can read my letter to him so i will not repeat i am sorry that you have concluded not to build but if in your judgment that is the best course i must be content i do not wish you to hamper yourself with obligations but in my mind building in the way proposed would not be onerous to you and would have given you the use of a house some years prior to the time that you may be able to erect one and thus have added to your comfort health and probable ability to increase your resources from your farm but i hope you have decided wisely and should circumstances occur to cause you to change your views you must not fail to let me know for i shall at all times stand ready to help you to the extent of my ability which i am now obliged to husband lest i may become a burden to others i am very glad to learn that your farm is promising better in the second cultivation of the fields and feel assured that if treated judiciously it will recover its fertility and be remunerative if you can perceive that you are progressing though with a slow and regular step you have cause for congratulations and encouragement for there are many i am sorry to say that are worse off now than when they commenced at the end of the war and have to begin again industry with economy must prevail in the end there seems to be a necessity for my going to baltimore next tuesday but i feel so poorly now that i do not know that i shall be able if i do go it will interfere materially with my proposed visit to you and fitzhugh this spring and i fear will put an end to it i shall be obliged to spend some days in alexandria on my return and could not then delay my return here i hope to see you both some time this summer and if i cannot get to you you must come to me i have been confined to the house for more than a week with a bad cold the effects of which still cling to me and though i am better this morning i am suffering 
your mother too i am sorry to say has been suffering from the same cause and has had to resort to medicine as well as myself you know that is bad for old people agnes has not been well but mildred is herself and surrounded by her two fresh broods of kittens she would not call the king her uncle god bless you my dear son praise your affectionate father r e lee r e lee jr the letter to his son fitzhugh is mostly upon business but some of it relates to more interesting matters lexington virginia april seventeenth eighteen sixty nine my dear fitzhugh i expect to go to baltimore next tuesday if well enough the valley railroad company are very anxious for me to accompany their delegation to that city with the view of obtaining from the mayor or council a subscription for their road and though i believe i can be of no service to them they have made such a point of it that it would look ill-mannered and unkind to refuse i wish i could promise myself the pleasure of returning by the white house but i cannot if i go to baltimore i must take time to pay certain visits and must stop a while in alexandria i shall therefore from there be obliged to return here if i could stop there on my way to baltimore which i cannot for want of time i would then return by the white house i shall hope however to see you and rob during the summer if i have to go down immediately after commencement but it is so inconvenient for me to leave home now that i cannot say poor little agnes also has been visited by dr barton of late but she is on the mend life holds her own both of her cats have fresh broods of kittens and the world wags cheerily with her custis is well and mary is still in new york and all unite with me in much love to you and my daughter tab and my grandson i hope the latter has not formed the acquaintance of his father in the same manner as warrington carter's child your affectionate father r e lee general william h fitzhugh lee in order to induce the city of baltimore to aid them in building their railroad from staunton to salem the valley railroad company got together a large delegation from the counties through which it was proposed the line should pass and sent it to that city to lay the plans before the mayor and council and request assistance among those selected from rockbridge county was general lee lexington at this time was one of the most inaccessible points in virginia fifty miles of canal or twenty-three of staging over a rough mountain road were the only routes in existence the one from lynchburg consumed twelve hours the other from goshen a station on the chesapeake and ohio railroad from seven to eleven on one occasion a gentleman during his first visit to lexington called on general lee and on bidding him good-bye asked him the best way to get back to washington it makes but little difference replied the general for whichever route you select you will wish you had taken the other it was therefore the desire of all interested in the welfare of the two institutions of learning located in lexington that this road should be built my father's previous habits of life his nature and his taste made him averse to engaging in affairs of this character but because of the great advantage to the college should it be carried through and at the earnest request of many friends of his and of the road he consented to act general john eccles from staunton colonel pendleton from buchanan judge mclaughlin from lexington were amongst those who went with him while in baltimore he stayed at the house of mr and mrs samuel tagart whom he had met several summers at the white sulphur springs the delegation was invited to the floor of the corn and flour exchange to meet the business men of the city my father for the same reasons given above earnestly desired to be excused from this part of the programme and asked some of his friends to see mr john w garrett the president of the baltimore and ohio railroad who had the delegation in charge and try to have it so arranged mr garrett however was very positive general lee is a most interesting man i think he had better come was the message brought back to him as he appeared on the floor which was filled with a great crowd he was greeted with deafening cheers and was soon surrounded by the thousands who had assembled there to see him everywhere that he appeared in the city he received an ovation sunday intervening he attended service in the morning at st paul's church on charles street when it became known that general lee was there large numbers collected to see him come out waiting patiently and quietly until the congregation was dismissed 
as he appeared at the door all heads were uncovered and kept so until he had passed through the long lines extending down the street a reception was given by mr taggart in his honour there his friends crowded to see him and the greatest affection and deference were shown him he had lived in baltimore about twenty years before this time and many of his old friends were still there besides baltimore had sent to the army of northern virginia a large body of her noble sons who were only too glad to greet once more their former commander that he was still a prisoner on parole disenfranchised from all civil rights made their love for him stronger and their welcome the more hearty on his return to lexington he was asked how he enjoyed his visit with a sad smile he said very much but they would make too much fuss over the old rebel a few days after he came home when one of his daughters remonstrated with him about the hat he was wearing he replied you don't like this hat why i have seen a whole city full come out to admire it there is only a short note to my mother that i can find written during this trip baltimore april twenty seventh eighteen sixty nine my dear mary i am still at mr taggart's but propose going to-morrow to ella's and thence to washington's which will consume wednesday and thursday if not obliged to return here which i cannot tell till this evening or to-morrow morning i will then go to washington where i shall be obliged to spend a day or two and thence to alexandria so i shall not be able to return to lexington till the last of next week what has become of little agnes i have seen many of our old friends of whom i will tell you on my return i have bought you a little carriage the best i could find which i hope will enable you to take some pleasant rides all send love give mine to mildred and custis and all friends i am just about starting to mrs baker's truly and affectionately r e lee mrs m c lee the ella mentioned was mrs sam george of baltimore who as a girl had always been a pet and favourite of my father she was a daughter of his first cousin mr charles henry carter of goodwood prince george county maryland and a schoolmate of my sister mary their country place was near ellicott city he went there to see her and from there to linwood near by the seat of washington peter my mother's first cousin and an intimate friend of us all on saturday my father accompanied by mr and mrs taggart went to washington on an early train they drove immediately to the executive mansion and called on the president this meeting was of no political significance whatever but simply a call of courtesy it had been intimated to general lee that it would be most agreeable to general grant to receive him mr and mrs taggart went with him and they met there mr motley the newly appointed minister to england the interview lasted about fifteen minutes and neither general lee nor the president spoke a word on political matters while in washington my father was the guest of mrs kennan of tudor place georgetown heights on sunday he dined with mrs podestad and her husband the secretary of the spanish legation who were old friends and relatives after leaving washington he stopped in alexandria for several days as the guest of mrs a m fitzhugh it was at her country place ravensworth about ten miles from town that his mother had died and there in the old ivy-covered graveyard she was buried mrs fitzhugh was the wife of my mother's uncle mr william henry fitzhugh who having no children had made my mother his heir the intimacy between arlington and ravensworth was very close since mr fitzhugh's death which occurred some thirty years prior to this time my father and mother and their children had been thrown a great deal with his widow and aunt maria as we called her became almost a member of the family she had the greatest love and admiration for robert sought his advice in the management of her estate and trusted him implicitly his brother admiral sidney smith lee came up from richland his home on the potomac near aquia creek to meet him and he found at mrs fitzhugh's aunt nanny footnote mrs s s lee end note, and her son fitz lee this was the first time they had met each other since their parting in richmond just after the war on his arrival in alexandria my father had walked up from the wharf to aunt maria's he was recognized by a number of citizens who showed him the greatest deference and respect 
so many of his friends called upon him at mrs fitzhugh's that it was arranged to have a reception for him at the mansion house for three hours a constant stream of visitors poured into the parlours the reception was the greatest ovation that any individual had received from the people of alexandria since the days of washington the next day in bishop john's carriage he drove out to seminary hill to the home of mr cassius f lee his first cousin where he spent the night in the afternoon he went to see the bishop and his family general cooper and the rev dr packard the next morning with uncle smith he attended ascension day services at christ church and was afterward entertained at a dinner party given by mr john b dangerfield before he left alexandria he called on mr john janey who was president of the virginia convention in eighteen sixty one when as colonel lee he appeared before it and accepted the command of the virginia forces organized and to be organized one evening a correspondent of the new york herald paid him a visit for the purpose of securing an interview the general was courteous and polite but very firm he stood during the interview and finally dismissed the reporter saying i shall be glad to see you as a friend but request that the visit may not be made in your professional capacity the same correspondent had tried to interview him for his paper while he was in baltimore but had failed my father was much amused at an occurrence that took place during this visit late one afternoon a visitor was announced as the general was very tired uncle smith lee volunteered to relieve him the visitor was found to be an irish woman very stout and unprepossessing who asked if she could see the general the admiral bowed intimating that he was the desired person when she said my boy was with you in the war honey and i must kiss you for his sake and with that she gave the admiral an embrace and a kiss mr cassius lee to whom he told this suggested that he should take general fitz lee along to put forward in such emergencies my father's first letter after his return to lexington was the following lexington virginia may eleventh eighteen sixty nine my dear fitzhugh i reached here last saturday bringing agnes and miss peyton with me from staunton found everybody well and custis better i had upon the whole a pleasant visit and was particularly glad to see again our old friends and neighbours in alexandria and vicinity though should have preferred to enjoy their company in a more quiet way your uncle smith came up to meet me and your aunt nanny and fitz were there i had not seen them since i parted from them in richmond after the war i wish i could have visited you and rob and have seen my daughter and grandson but that pleasure i trust is preserved for a future day how is the little fellow i was much relieved after parting from you to hear from the doctors that it was the best time for him to have the whooping cough in which opinion the mim concurs i hope that he is doing well bishop whittle will be here friday next and is invited to stay with us there are to be a great many preparatory religious exercises this week a great feeling of religion pervades the young in the community especially at the virginia military institute all send love your affectionate father r e lee since his establishment in lexington general lee had been a member of the vestry of grace episcopal church at the council of eighteen sixty eight which met at lynchburg he had been sent as a delegate and spent three days there this year the council was to meet in fredericksburg and he was again elected to represent his church this was a busy time with him the examinations were commencing his new home was about ready to move into and the preparations for the commencement exercises had to be made yet he accepted the trust imposed upon him by his church and took a week out of his valuable time to perform it in his next letter to his son after writing on some smith's island business he tells him of his proposed journey to fredericksburg and of his regret at not being able to visit him as he had intended lexington virginia may twenty two eighteen sixty nine my dear fitzhugh the weather here has been very hard on the cornfields and i hear of many having to be replanted the wheat so far is very promising and i am glad to hear that yours and rob's is equally so i have been elected by our little church to represent it at the coming convention and have concluded to go i shall leave for fredericksburg tuesday june first and shall endeavour while there to spend a night with your uncle smith the only visit i shall be able to make him 
it is very inconvenient for me to be absent at this time the examination of the senior classes is in progress and i must hasten back to attend as many as i can the new house is about finished the contractors say they will deliver the keys on monday the thirty first instant i will make arrangements to have it cleaned out during the week so as to be able to move in on my return the commencement a busy time with me is approaching and we must try to be prepared i shall not therefore be able to pay you a visit at this time but hope custis and i will be able to do so after the close of the session i met bishop whittle at lynchburg last convention and was much pleased with him my favourable impressions were much strengthened and increased by this visit here i am so glad to learn that my little grandson is getting on so well with his whooping cough you must kiss him and his mother for me we are all about the same your mother is becoming interested in her painting again and is employing her brush for the benefit of our little church which is very poor she yet a while confines herself to colouring photographs and principally to those of general and mrs washington which are sold very readily the girls are well and have miss peyton with them still custis i hope is better he is getting over some of his confinement with his classes now which i hope will be of benefit to him give my love to robert and tell my daughter tab i long to see her all unite with me in affectionate love i am truly your father r e lee these photographs that were being coloured by my mother were from the original portraits of general washington by peel and of mrs washington by w these paintings hung at mount vernon until the death of mrs washington and were then inherited by my grandfather mr custis they were at arlington till sixty one when they were removed to ravensworth where they remained until the end of the war when they were being sent to lexington the boat carrying them on the canal between lynchburg and lexington sank these pictures with many others belonging to my mother were very much injured and had to be sent to a restorer in baltimore who made them as good as ever and they were finally safely hung in the president's house in lexington and are now in the library of the university my mother coloured the photographs like these originals and sold a great many on account of their association rather than their merit there must have been some change of date in my father's plans for though he said he would start on june first for fredericksburg his first and only letter from there was written on may twenty eighth fredericksburg may twenty eighth eighteen sixty nine my dear mary i reached here tuesday night the night after the morning i left you about twelve o'clock and found major barton at the depot who conducted me to his house the town seems very full of strangers and i have met many acquaintances i have seen no one yet from cedar grove and cannot learn whether any of them are coming they are no doubt in distress there for you may have heard of the death of charles stuart on his way from arkansas he died at lynchburg of congestive chills harriet kazanov his sister went on to see him but he died before her arrival rosalie i heard was at cedar grove turbeville in essex i have delivered all your packages but margaret's cassius lee and all from the seminary are here sally came up from gloucester and also mrs tolliver but i must tell you of all occurrences upon my return and of all whom i have met all friends inquire very particularly and affectionately after you particularly your cousin mrs blank who turns up every day at all assemblies corners and places with some anxious question on her mind upon which some mighty though to me hidden importance depends fitz lee arrived to-day though i have not seen him yet if i can accomplish it i will go to richland to-morrow saturday and spend sunday and take up my line of march monday in which event i hope to reach lexington wednesday morning or rather tuesday night in the stage from goshen i may not be able to get away from the council before monday in that case i shall not arrive before wednesday night tell the girls there are quantities of young girls here and people of all kinds i hope that you are well and that everything will be ready to move into our new house upon my arrival i am obliged to stop i am so much interrupted and occupied that though i have tried to write ever since my arrival i have been unable love to all very affectionately r e lee mrs r e lee 
cedar grove was the plantation of dr richard stewart in king george county some fifty miles from fredericksburg his wife a miss calvert of riversdale maryland was a dear cousin of my mother and had been her bridesmaid and the two families had been intimate all their lives all the persons mentioned by my father were cousins and friends several of them old neighbors from alexandria and the theological seminary near by from fredericksburg after the completion of his duties at the council he went to richland on the potomac near aquia creek where his brother smith was then living this meeting was a great pleasure to them both for two brothers were never more devoted this was the last time they saw one another alive as smith died two months afterwards End of chapter nineteen